Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we're going to be using Cottontail Cuties to do a little bit of Copa coloring. So I have my Mini Misty here. Um, I already have my stamps laid in. There are a bunch of really adorable little stamps in this set, but I decided I was going to use both of the um, little girls. Um, so they look like one was handing a chick to the other. And basically we're just going to be doing a whole lot of copa coloring. It's a it's a one layer panel. Um, I decided I wanted to stick to more traditional spring colors, so a little bit lighter. Um, usually when I'm coloring grass I do a YG01, a YG03, and a YG17, and even most of the time I go to a YG67 because I like contrast. But since I was trying to stick to lighter colors I decided that I was going to just use three colors and I was going to use a Y00. The reason that that is is because the YG01 is the lightest green that I own. Um, but the Y00, I mean it really does look like a green once you put it down with those colors. So I gave myself just um, a couple of little um, base layers and then I'm going to start adding in some grass. I'm using just the tip of the marker and I'm doing a light flicking motion and then I'm kind of blending out some of those blades of grass so I'm bringing the YG03 kind of out into the YG01 um, just so that it kind of makes sense. I kept doing this all the way out to the Y00 and I still didn't like the way that it looked. I didn't feel like I had enough contrast. So I'm going to bring in a YG06 just to add in a couple of darker grasses. This is also just a little bit more blue than the colors that I had chose. Um, so it is much more visible. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other colors. Blend all the way back out to that Y00. And then I was a little bit more happy with it. So usually when I color people I have a tendency to start with their skin tone. This is my favorite color combination for skin tones um, and it does appear to be a little dark uh, right up until you start adding other colors. Um, so I started putting in my shadows with my lightest color which that's what I always do. It helps me from being too heavy handed with my darks and it also helps in case I make an error in where my shading is and then it's really easy to cover up which I do in this card and you'll be able to see it firsthand. So the way that I typically color is with my light sources in the top right hand corner. That's why the shading is different on each of the girls because the girl on the left hand side would have would be looking at the sun and the girl on the right would have her back to the sun. So her face is going to be darker where the one on the left her the front of her face will be lighter. So I go all the way out to my darkest color which is an E04. The name of that color is actually um, called, I think it's called lipstick, um, but it really blends <laughs> out kind of nicely with um, like the peachy tones. So for the girl on the right, the lightest color in her skin tone is the um, E00, where the girl on the left I went ahead with the E50. I'm going to give them just a little bit of a pink cheek and then I'm going to move on to their hair. Again, when I do people, skin tone first, I do hair second, and then I move on to outfits and anything else just kind of from there. I'm going to use the same colors for both of the girls' hair, um, but I'm only going to add the darkest color to the one on the right, so one will appear to be more blonde than the other. This is a great way to just kind of um, just know that you can stretch your markers if you don't own all of them. I'm still doing um, using the tip of my marker in kind of a light flicking motion to create those little strands of hair, but there isn't a ton of hair here, um, so you don't have to be particularly careful with it. I probably could have colored it in solid and it would have been fine. But anyway, like I said, I added that E47 to the one on the right, not the one on the left, and you can see even just by dark adding that one darker color their hair colors look completely different. So from here we're going to move on to the outfits. Um, like I said I was trying to stick to more like spring colors and I don't know like blue greens, light blues, pinks, yellows. To me those are all um, you know more pastel spring colors. So her shading because she's facing the sun her shading is going to be darker on the left hand side. 
and I always turn my paper, I don't know if that's difficult to watch on YouTube videos or not, but I typically turn my paper just because when I am doing that flicking motion with my Copics, it's easier for me to flick away from myself when I'm usually happier with my results that way. So the way that I colored um, the little girls is I basically did their main dresses, their little bunny dresses, two different colors, and then I kept all of their um, accessories, their little leggings, the bellies of their uh, dresses, I kept all that the same. And probably because if I had two girls, I would dress them similar. I had, I'm one of three, ch one of three children. My parents had all girls and me and my middle sister are closer in age. And my mother used to do this to us all the time. Like I remember distinctly being at a wedding. Um, I grew up in the eighties side note from this. Um, so we were, we were at a wedding and my mother had dressed us up in these little outfits. They had like little black leggings. Um, and polka dot tops and my polka dot top was white and black and my sister's polka dot top was pink and black and she had the same matching little sunglass hair clips in her hair i mean <laughs> like now i like i think back on that picture and just um i don't even know what my mom was thinking but whatever i'm sure she thought we were cute um so yeah, if I had two little girls, I would probably do the same heinous thing to them. I would dress them up to match because it is kind of adorable. <laughs> um, so here for her little leggings, the same thing with the shading is going to be on the back left hand side. I added the same pink to the ears and then I'm going to move on to the one on the right. Now you remember me just a few minutes ago, I said that I added the shading in the wrong place. I'm shading her as if I'm shading her back just like I did the other one and then I realize Mm, no, that's not right. Mm, it's incorrect because my light source is behind her. So because I start with my lightest color, nobody, I mean, if I wouldn't have pointed it out to you and you just saw the finished card, you wouldn't even notice. Um, and that's the really nice thing about starting your shading with the lightest color because if I had started with the darkest, I wouldn't have been able to fix it. It just would have been what it was. So for her, everything that's on the left hand side is going to be darker and even with her arm, it's sticking out kind of away from her body. So really the only highlight she's going to have is the point that's furthest away from her where her body wouldn't be blocking the light. I picked a couple of uh, blue greens that I thought would blend together really well. I did struggle a little bit to blend the BG13 into the BG11. Um, I, I'm not really sure what the what the hang up was, but um, you could see kind of more of the um, the flicking or the striations that it left behind, and I really had to work with the the BG11 to get it to blend out so that it wasn't um, just so noticeable. But in doing that and continually going over the same areas um, to get it to blend, I lost a little bit of depth from my darkest color. So once I was done going over everything with my lightest color, uh, I'm going to go back in with the darkest and just kind of add that into the areas where the shading would be the darkest on her little dress. And this is just a good something to keep in mind because um, sometimes we do have to work a little bit to get those colors to blend the way that we want them to look. So once I had their little outfits done, I did the same pink on the right that I did on the left. I just changed up the shading for what would make sense. I decided I was going to do their little shoes gray. Um, I actually colored this image twice. I colored the image twice. The first time that I did this um, card, I actually did it with the Kurataki Ganzai Tambi watercolors because I'm really comfortable with Copics. Um, that's kind of like my go-to medium. I'm relatively quick with them. It doesn't take me... Um, a super long time. It takes me about an hour to do a card. This card took about an hour in real time. Um, so I'm trying to like push my boundaries and learn new things and um, <laughs> uh, so I did it and I did it last night and it was all colored and it was good to go and then I had to I, I was like okay I'll just edit the video tomorrow. Uh, it's sleepy time night night for this old mama and um, sometime today while I was doing regular things in the house, my child went into my craft room and he painted my card. This is the second time this has happened to me. 
where, and it hasn't even been photographed yet, where he has just colored my card. Yeah. Mm hmm It's awesome. So when I sat down to do it again, I wasn't in love with the watercolor version anyway. Um, just because... I just struggle. I just struggle. The struggle is real, folks. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it the way that I wanted to do it in the first place, which was the Copics, which is not necessarily challenging at all. But I still end up with something that I like. So for that wagon that I was coloring during story time here, um, the the shading is uh, more on the left hand side, and then for this basket, um, again, the shading, the darker shading is going to be on the left hand side and the uh, lighter shading will be on the right where the highlight is. Uh, I did go back in and just kind of darken up the back of that handle. Anything that if you make a little bit darker is going to look like it's behind. Um, so it's just kind of like a good little trick to get some depth. I picked two lighter yellows to color the little chick because chicks are always yellow in my head. I don't know that they're really any other color in real life. But then from there, I just started adding color to all of those little eggs. And I also colored the little grasses in the basket. I used the same greens that I did the grass with. So because I have a real problem with not adding details to everything, I added some little polka dots to their bellies. I colored in the white dots on that egg um, and the centers of the tires. And then I just added a couple of little... Um, designs to the eggs that are in the basket. I like to outline my images after I'm done coloring. I like a clean black outline and it's a little bit bolder when you go over it. And so once I was done with that, I actually trimmed my card panel down. And the reason that I did is because I didn't stamp it centered. <laughs> um, sometimes you just may have to make changes based on the way that things work out. And it actually came out okay. So this sentiment is from the same set and it says, hey chicky. And that's super cute to like send to a girlfriend or, you know, your sister or whatever. Um, so I stamped that down. And the reason I stamped it on the right is because I felt like the card, because the wagon is more toward the bottom of the card, it leaves a lot of that white area. And so the card feels more full on the left hand side. So I added the sentiment to the right to give it a little bit of balance. I'm popping the panel up on some uh, white craft foam. And then I'm going, since I have to make up for that area that I cut off, I'm just using a little bit of washi tape. This is a, a light gray stripe, uh, diagonal stripe washi tape. And so I'm going to pop this up over that. And so it has just like a little bit of a pattern over there on the side um, to just kind of balance everything out. And yeah, that's pretty much, no, I added sequins. It's not pretty much the whole card. That's a lie. Um, I added from the clear sequins mix, I felt like, the bottom of the sentiment um, felt a little bare. So I did add some clear sequins and I'm just kind of messing around with them trying to get my placement um, for how I want it highlighted. And then that's it. That is the whole card. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you learned something and um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.